with state and local governments preventing churches from gathering. I got to touch on this point because it's, it's getting kind of contentious right now. This is a very touchy subject, and it's really honestly a, real, it's a close call. And so the, but the ultimate, if we take this framework that we've laid out, the ultimate question is, has God commanded us to meet physically in groups larger than the ordinances allow? Is it possible for us to fulfill God's command to, quote, not neglect to meet together, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25? Is it possible for us to do that while still obeying the ordinances? If so, then we ought to obey the ordinances. And instead of speaking, you know, blanketly for all local rules and state rules and all church situations, I've kind of laid out that framework of order. I won't give a specific answer for fear of answering out of ignorance. I mean, I don't know every church situation. I think each church has to analyze this themselves. How possible is it for us to meet without violating the ordinances? I would venture to say for the extreme vast majority of churches, it is possible to meet physically and to meet virtually without breaking these ordinances. I really think it's possible. I may be wrong for a one or two or three, so that's why I am refraining from giving a blanket statement. But go back to the framework. Is it possible if God commands us to meet, we meet, but we also try in every way to meet in obedience to the ordinances that our government gives? Now, one more thing on the John MacArthur situation. This is something that's you know, we have to take into account above what I just said. He has a legal team, and that legal team appealed to an order under the correct procedure, and they won a temporary ruling in the court system of, I don't know if the county, Los Angeles County, or whatever, wherever he is, or the state of California. They followed the rules. They appealed in the courts. And this is a good example of when you think your government is acting wrongly or inconsistently with its own laws, you can use a form of defense, nonviolently protest the ruling, providing a good defense, and accept the decision that's handed down from higher judges if your legal system allows that. And, and I have to remind, once again, I know I've said this multiple times, I said it in the last video too, but when you're doing this, when you're appealing or when you're protesting peacefully, you have to keep things orderly, respectful. You cannot just go out and ba bad mouth and speak evil of people. And I know that John MacArthur, he did his thing. I, I think that what he did is fine with, with the court system and going and appealing. I think it's best to follow the law and then appeal before you go and disobey the law and say, we want to disobey the law, but we want to get a court ruling but sometimes that's not exactly how the legal system works. It's better to, I don't know, break the rule and let the enforcement come after you. That's just how our system works. This, that's what I'm saying. There's no bulletproof answer. But the real point here with John MacArthur is he went out to a lot of radio stations. He talked about his defense. And you have to, when you're doing that, and I'm not accusing John MacArthur of, of bad-mouthing people. I think he did a really good job. He went out and spoke the truth of why he's doing what he's doing giving his defense. And I think that all along the way, he was going to, if the highest courts told him, no, you can't do this, he was going to obey the highest courts. And, but he never badmouthed or trash talked anyone. And to the extent that he may have entered into that realm, I would say refrain. Refrain from just heaping insult and, and doing anything that would keep from being at peace with all people.